Welcome to the Look It's Rock and Roll podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gills. Today, I am joined by Lonnie. Welcome back. What's up? Mark, Mark, welcome back. Greetings. And Ken. Hello there. And if this isn't enough of a hint about what we're about to talk about, we're going to do a review of the new ACDC album, Power up so we're gonna get through our usual batch of questions uh very quickly and then we're gonna get into a song ranking format for this show so for each of us we're gonna quickly go through what was our first ac dc album our introduction to the band and what our favorite um ac dc album is i'm gonna get started because i was given the gift of music for Christmas one year by a aunt who was slightly older than I was. And she sent a batch of cassette tapes out from England, which were number one, very cool because in America they look different than they do at uh, English uh, releases. And she included like Led Zeppelin four, um, power age. And if you want blood, you've got it. So those were my mm. first two ACDC albums, uh, and one of them is still, to this day, my favorite. And my favorite is Power Age. And I did a, a really fun podcast episode with BJ Crap on the Rock and or Roll podcast, which I think all those episodes got pulled, unfortunately, um, where we went into the guts of Power Age. And my favorite version is the original like European version, which had a kind of rougher mix so it was more punky, and it had, I think, Cold Hearted Man on it. So um, that's my favorite. To this day, I go back to that, and, uh, you know, it really is all I need. Mark, what about you? Well, um, ACDC has been in my psyche for a long time. Once again, the older sister strikes, and uh, she had many an ACDC. She had her binder covered in the ubiquitous big ACDC logo on her binder there. And uh, we had Highway to Hell from its, you know, the the day it came out, she had bought it in 79. So uh, that was rotating around in our house from that far back from what I can remember. I was really young at that time, so I don't remember it, but she had it already by that time. Um, ACDC also was something that one of my good friends was a diehard fan of, so I couldn't escape it anywhere. I was very familiar with the discography uh, growing growing up through my teenage years and through high school. Uh, the first album that I actually got was Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap on cassette here in Canada. Uh, and that was a big, you know, kind of summer party cassette that we would always play and, you know, Go, one of us would, you know, we would do the whole, the old flip a coin and who's going to go and attempt to go to the liquor store and get some beer this weekend because we were all underage. And, you know, every once in a while we would succeed and then, you know, pull out our ACDC tapes and, you know, pretend we were all cool. And then um, later on, you know, I started, I mean, they started falling out of favor with me later because I started finding a lot of their later albums just didn't connect with me that much. I just found them starting to be a little stale, like Black Ice or Rock or Bust. I wasn't too hip on. But my my favorite record to this day, and I'm not sure if it's because it was one of those one of these records I also bought myself, but I think it just came at the right time for me. And that was, uh, it wasn't the, the original year, mind you, that I bought it. I bought it many years later, but it was uh, for those about to rock. That that record has always been one of my favorite ACDC albums. I mean, the first four songs on that album are just like unbelievable. I mean, one of the, quite possibly one of the best one, two, three song, you know, orders on an album for sure. I mean, my favorite song quite possibly is Let's Get It Up. I mean, that, I've always loved that song. And I've always told people, if you want to hear the sound of a raw Marshall amplifier plug straight in, turn that song on. And you'll hear it right from the very beginning. Real nice. Yep. Lonnie, what about you? Your entry point, uh, your first ACDC album, and your favorite ACDC album? Well, my entry point, like um, like you guys, is influenced from, you know, an, an older 
family member, in this case it was my, my older brother, which I talk about quite a bit. Um, he bought Back in Black on CD. And, you know, I knew most of the songs, or a lot of the songs from the radio, you know. So that was the first album he bought. And then I bought the ACDC live album mm. in 92, 91, something like that, whenever it came out. And that was my, so, you know, my thought process was, well, I know, I know some of these songs because, you know, he has Back in Black. So, and I know a lot of these other songs from the radio. So I just get this live album that came out because ACDC is not like one of our other favorite bands. They, they, they don't put out um, greatest hits packages. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't think they have a greatest hits single CD package period, unless it's a live album. So um, so I bought I bought the live CD and, and it and it's a great live CD. It's actually one of my favorite um, live albums that ACDC um, album from the '90s. So that was my entry point into the band. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't long after he bought Back in Black that I bought that live album. Um, and then we him and I saw them on the we saw them twice on the Ball Breaker tour in '96. Wow. They came. They came through St. Louis twice. Which who the hell comes through St. Louis twice? But they did in '96. Um, so we got to see them like in January '96, and then back in again in August in '96, which was great. Um, and I love that album. That's I I may go on with them and say Ball Breaker. It's a very rare pick. I'm gonna wow. because 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 of my and, and again everything we talk about it all the time but because of your age and things like that and and where you were and you know just time capsules of your life i'm gonna say and no one else is gonna say this and they ne and they never play anything off of it i love that album i'm gonna say ball breaker is my favorite ac album. if my brother listens to this I'll wow <laughs> wow that, that's that's a hot take they do have a great assist package iron man by the way oh yeah I technically I know it doesn't. It's really? not the same as ACDC's greatest. Hits, not ACDC's but, greatest. Hits. You know, it, it actually, kind of the is. funny thing is, before we get to Ken, I just had, I do have to cite one thing because I just heard Lonnie mention that he went on tour for the Ball Breaker tour, right? He went yeah. on that tour, right? Yeah, yeah. My, I saw ACDC in concert once. They came through in Toronto, and you're not going to believe this. I saw them on the Blow Up Your Video tour. Nice. They came to Toronto. That was really early. Like, I mean, and it was funny because. The, Angus comes out of this missile that comes out of the ground from the stage and they started with heat seeker. And I was like, wow. And it had the funniest moment I've That's ever cool. seen in a concert. There was a guy that was sitting because he had seats available behind the stage. And there was this guy just liquored out of his mind. He was all like doing this, like, ah, like he barely can sit in his seat. And at one point he just passed out like this. And then I was watching him the whole night with my binoculars to see if something stupid would happen to him. And then the funniest thing happened. They played for those about to rock. And right when that part came with the fire, with the gun, they had, they brought up this huge cannon from behind the stage. Mm -hmm. And it was literally like right in front of him. And the first gunshot, the guy literally jumped out of his chair and <laughs> fell on the floor. Like he was, it scared the living shit out of him. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. Those are my greatest memory of an ACDC concert. <laughs> nice. Actually, I just want to just do a, one quick uh, story on Blow Up Your Video Tour. I got a tape of a Paul Stanley solo tour from 1989 that had been confiscated by security while the filmer was in midst of it. And he had actually taped over his recording of um, the Blow Up Your Video <laughs> tour that had been, mm. you know, a couple months earlier. So City Gardens in uh, New Jersey, taped over, you know, with uh, the first five songs from a Paul Stanley show before he got busted. Then you're able to watch the rest of the, um, <laughs> you know, the, the uh, ACDC show. Ken, all right, you're, all of those questions to you. Thank you for being so patient with all our tangents. Yes. Oh, no, no, that's perfectly fine. I, I mean, uh, I think I did have the, the live one, like Lonnie said, and I always thought of that as the greatest hits mm -hmm. package. Yeah. Um, so for me, uh, my entry point was, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure I remember this right. Uh, my friend uh, brought over one of his, uh, usually he brought over a couple, you know, vinyl albums, and we'd listen to them, you know, so, something that, that I didn't have. Um, and one of them was uh, Highway to Hell. Mm -hmm. And and that was my my real first hearing of them. I think I had heard 
Highway to Hell on the radio, and I didn't know who it was. I didn't really know of ACDC at that time. Um, but I was like, oh, this, yeah, this is, you know, cool, great song. And then, you know, proceeded to listen to the other songs on there, and they were all, you know, pretty darn good, you know, Walk All Over You and and uh, other songs like that. So that was the entry point. Um, as for my favorite album, uh, it was the next album, <laughs> Back in Black. Back in Black was is, is my favorite album. Uh, by them, uh, I you know I can't skip any song of that. That I think every song is stellar on that album. It's just so so great, um, and you know hey, it's their best selling album. You know, so that, that must mean something I guess out there. Um, but a lot of the other songs on that album that didn't play on the radio are all you know great. Have Have a Drink on Me and all these other ones, rock and roll, late noise pollution and, and so on. Um, so, so that was a big deal. Um, so that was the song, you know, I'm like, uh, that's my favorite. And then I like Mark, you know, I had the one after that for those about the rock, which is, was pretty good, but I don't, I didn't think it lived up to back in black, but, uh, and then I kind of fell off after that. They, some of their, uh, albums were eh, okay. But I did go back in the catalog uh, and get, you know, like Dirty Deeds and, and so on, uh, which, you know, were great uh, early stuff that they had. So th those early albums are all great. Anyway, Back in Black was the the favorite for me. That's a really good mix of albums from us. I'm glad someone threw in Ball Breaker. I think that one is worthy of a revisit, as I did recently, going back through the catalog. And uh, it it's easy to not be as harsh on it in this day and age, but uh, I certainly remember being very harsh on it back in the day. Um, really? Yeah, I, and and really, it's not that bad. It's an ACDC album. It's not like they were doing reggae or or raga or anything. It, it's not like they did anything <laughs> spectacularly different. But let's get into talking about Power Up. And, you know, just some thoughts on that. When you first heard of it, what what was your reaction to there's a new ACDC album coming? Um, or, you know, there was also a mm. lot of kind of photos circulating here and there. Things were dripping out on Blabbermouth and the rock press over the past couple of years, suggesting, you know, that there was hope. And, you know, I had tickets to the, uh, the uh, Giant Stadium show um, a few years back. And, and Mystic is a work. Lonnie knows all about that. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't miss things. So, <laughs> you know, I, I thought my chance to possibly see Brian Johnson or ACDC, even, I can't remember if that actor was filling it at that point, you know, had gone. So when f the first pictures from Vancouver of them having a smoke break outside the studio kind of service, it's like, is he? Are they? Is there? Maybe. And then obviously the, the news coming out, I was spectacularly excited, more so, I think, than I was for Rock or Bust or Black Eyes and certainly Stiff Upper Lip. And that's probably more because of the context of the times that we find ourselves living in. Um, mm -hmm. And, and that I think will be a theme that comes into a lot of my comments about the songs is that we're in the middle of a pandemic and anything that's good that happens, whether it's the Foo Fighters live stream or Metallica live stream or ACDC coming out with an album is spectacularly more important than it once seemed when everything was normal. Lonnie, your thoughts on, you know, the, the album coming out. Well, I agree. I agree with your sentiment. Um, 100% that anything good that comes about either in my life or in the world right now seems that much greater than it ever has before. Um, I think it. I think if 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 2020 has taught us anything, it's that we can, should be appreciative of the good things and and the good times in life. Um, so that being said, let's talk a little more about ACDC though. Um, I was very hopeful of a new ACDC album um, for a long time, and I saw them back in February of 16 right before like one of the last shows brian johnson did before he had to bow out on the rocker bus tour and part of and, and 
when the news came out that, that Brian Johnson was stepping down, then the whole rumors about Axel filling in and then Axel eventually taking the reins and, and doing those shows across the States to finish out that tour. Um, I was disappointed and I was like, oh, because I'm a, you know, obviously I'm a huge guns guy. I was like, how cool would it be to see ACDC and Axel singing those songs? Like, I mean, that, so how cool is that going to be? Because whether the band continue, I mean, the band may not continue at all, you know, with, with Brian being out and, you know, it would have been so cool to see him. It'd be a once in a lifetime opportunity. My, my brother um, loves guns as well, but he's like, no, you know, I, I, ACDC is Brian Johnson. I got to have Brian Johnson and ACDC. I'm glad we show, saw the show that we did. We had, you know, different opinions about it. So, um, so when that tour ended, I think people and a lot of ACDC fans were really up in the air, like, you know, you know, is, is this going to continue? Is it not? And then, more tragedy hits the band and it's just like you know it, how how can they continue at this point um but yet they do they, they rise from the ash and they, and they do continue and I, I was i was excited about it coming out um and then it does come out and i and we'll, we'll get into it but i but i've turned it on and you just hear those initial and i i didn't i was really good about this i didn't i didn't want to listen to anything until i got the album and I just wanted to hear the album fresh for the first time, like like being a kid, and just listen to those Angus Young guitar chords. It's like, man, what a breath of fresh air in a shitty year to have new ACDC. Like I I, I, group, I think we were group texting each other last Saturday, and I was like, I, I was I was sitting in my garage barbecuing because it was seventy degrees here, and I was listening to ACDC. I'm like, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> so. I was I was excited to get it and and I and I really like the album and we'll get into it. Mark, how about you? Okay, well I'll be honest. When I first heard that ACDC were going to be coming out with an album, I was kind of like, oh. I wasn't as excited about it at all. Like I said, I had totally checked out at this point with ACDC. I was like, yeah, whatever. Another album's going to sound the same as Black Ice and those other ones, just re- rehashed old tired music. Then I saw, then they started putting up pictures, you know, of them in the back, you know, like Julian said with them smoking in the back. And I was like, something about that picture kind of connected with me because I was like, I remember doing that myself back when I was younger too. Like, you know, hanging out at the studio with the guys, you know, after we got back together, you know, making a record together when I was a pile driver and all that too, that kind of vibe. And I was like, yeah, that, that looks kind of cool. I have a, and then all of a sudden, I can't explain it, but I had this good feeling all of a sudden. That something was happening. It was almost like, like superheroes had retired, and then it's like you see Superman and the guys all back together again, you know, in a photo together. And all of a sudden, you get this good feeling that something good's gonna happen. And I remember when I first got the album and listened to it, I I, I listened to it from beginning to end, and I was absolutely, honestly, in shock. It was such a good record, and it and it was something that I was unaware that I desperately needed to listen to as a musician, as a person who's going through all this stuff like everybody else in this world. This record was tailor made for this time period. It's positive, it's uplifting, it's it gives you that kind of party mood. It does you can't help but feel kind of upbeat and kind of you know have a bit of a more swing in your step listening to this album. And you know, the guys who did it, Brendan O'Brien and that, did a fantastic job in it. One of the things I got to commend with them is that they made it a perfect vinyl album. It's 41 minutes. It's in and out, you know, perfect. It wasn't one of these, like, 60, 70-minute records. You know, it was a perfect length. It makes you want to listen to it over and over again. And honestly, the the first couple of songs on this record are just absolutely fantastic. Angus Young nails it with his guitar play. I know we'll get into it in more details, but... I just, I it's it's the record that I didn't realize I needed to hear this year. Ken. Yeah, I I think I saw that. Uh, I don't know. I heard rumblings for a long time about you know is ACDC gonna you know record and I think I, I would just I would check the news on them just every now and then, uh, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, after they lost Malcolm. Um, uh, and then, you know, with, uh, well, even if they do regroup, well, they have Brian back, you know, is what's going on there, you know, with his hearing and so on. Um, but then, the, yeah, the pictures, like you guys said, uh, they were sh- they showed up and they're like, oh, 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 something's going on here. And so, 
uh, and then they, you know, had the preview of, uh, you know, shot in the dark finally. Uh, and it all happened real fast, you know, out of nowhere. I mean, it, by the time that, you know, they put the pictures out and then they had the, uh, the video and then they had, you know, announcement of the album. I mean, it, it all happened so quickly and, you know, it's out in, in our hands now. So, uh, yeah, I was very surprised. I was happy to see that like a classic band would come back now, whether it was going to be good or not, I didn't know. But after hearing, you know, uh, shot in the dark, I'm like, Oh, okay. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's unmistakable. Their sound, obviously, uh, but you you can always under, you know understand their sound. But I think it was it's like wow, this sounds you know going back. This sounds more '80s, you know, kind of sound to me. And uh, the song was you know nice rocking song. So uh, I was very pleased to uh, see them coming back. Is anyone just a little bit sad that there isn't a studio song with Axl Rose on lead vocals? Because no. I, I, I actually no. thought he did a fantastic job uh, I filling too. in for I Brian. Love I, love I, I would have loved to have hear, heard it, but I don't think it would have been right. And I, I think that's probably why at the end of the tour, Cliff's like, I'm done. Um, that Rock and Bust album didn't have the same feels for me that this one has. And maybe, again, it's just because of the time which it was released and maybe it was a little bit too close to Malcolm at that time when it came out, um, that there was something missing from it. And I wonder if anyone's told Chris Slade that he's out of the band yet, because he seems to be the last to find out, um, you know, anything. But obviously earlier this year, there was the, the photos from the video shoot leaked because that was done quite a long time ago. Now and they were getting all ready in March uh, to go live with it. And then life happened. So why don't we get into our song mm -hmm. ranking so we can go song by song on this from least favorite to most favorite on the album. And I think it's important caveat to make about these rankings that on many albums, the one that ends up at the bottom is not necessarily a bad song. It's just that yeah. other songs were preferred by each one of us in sequence so that you can mm -hmm. have a album of 10 stellar songs and something's still going to end up at the bottom. But it's always, always useful just to remind people that because it's at the bottom doesn't mean we hate it. So right. let's get started on our rankings in 12th place on five points. So clearly the least favorite of our uh, picks on this album, No Man's Land. Uh, Ken, let's get started with you, since it wasn't your least favorite song. It was almost. <laughs> it was right there next to the last. Um, yeah, I thought it was okay song. Um, I just kind of, I think the song itself, uh, the chorus itself is kind of, does nothing. Um, you know, the riff's all good. Again, it's, it's not a bad song. But it's, it just doesn't match up to a lot of the other songs on the album. And so it's kind of drags for me. I, I can't get into it as much as uh, a lot of the other material on the album. Yeah, Lonnie, Mark, and I all had it bottom. So, Lonnie, why don't you start us? Again, not, not a, like you said, not necessarily a bad song. You know, it, it has a classic ACDC sound. You know, as soon as it comes on, you, you, you know it's ACDC. I mean, nothing sounds like ACDC but ACDC. And like like Ken said though, it 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 just wasn't catchy enough for me at the end at the end of the day. I have I had to rank something in last place. And it to me it just wasn't as catchy enough as some of the other songs on, on the album. Not bad, but you know, just something had to come in last. Yep. Mark, how about you? Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna echo pretty much the same comment. I mean this is one of those records that they're isn't really a stinker in my opinion. There's just weaker songs on here, uh, which is which is great because I mean, in past ACDC albums, I always thought there were some rec songs that were like really like wow, why does it, what does this even do on this record? But you know, th this record has been really really good, and you know, it's just a matter of that. I just found that this one was the one that sat in my mind the the least. I mean, there's there's been so many times this week. Where I woken up and had shot in the dark in my brain, like playing over and over again, or having, you know, like, you know, any any of the other songs. I mean, like even like System Down or you know, or Realize, like the, the, like those songs, like the, like that background chorusing that they do in the one chorus. It's just they've been sticking in my head these songs, and that's a great sign. But this one, it just hasn't 
turned into that. So that's probably why I put it so low in the list. Yeah, when I was doing my ranking for the album, my only notes on this one were um, something has to co- come bottom, you know, even mm-hmm. on such a strong mm-hmm. album would have made a good Japanese uh, bonus track. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, yeah. and, and, and there it is. You know, it's up against a lot of really strong contenders, many of which are kind of more memorable in some ways. So not terrible, but not spectacular. Moving on now, well, um, quite substantial jump in the points in the ranking. In 11th place, Code Red on 16 points. So, Mark, why don't you lead us off on that? Um, actually, I didn't mind Code Red. I thought Code Red was a bit more memorable. Uh, I liked the guitar playing in this one quite a bit. And uh, again, it was one of these songs where something about Brian Johnson singing in this that I really enjoyed on it. There's, You can tell that he's happy that he's back in the band. I know it was one of these situations where he was really upset that he was not in the band when he, when he got, you know, had to leave it and stuff like that. But his his passion in the singing is back. I think that's one of the biggest things in this record that I noticed is that you can tell that he's really excited to be back and it shows so much in the singing. It's unbelievable, I think. Yeah, my, my comments, you know, I had it pretty low. I had it second from bottom. So my only comments on this one was would have made a good vinyl edition bonus track. And that's a complete <laughs> cop out. You know, again, it's again what you're measuring it up against. There were just songs that I felt were more memorable. <laughs> Ken. Yeah. Um, yeah, mine, I ranked it a little bit higher. I mean, an eight out of 12. So uh, it wasn't too bad for me. Um, I felt, though, that. And maybe this is what knocked it down in the list for me. I don't know if it was, but I had written down that the beginning sounded similar to uh, Back in Black riff, that riff right at the beginning. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, hey, this is getting a little too close to Back in Black on that one. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's a decent song. Uh, I, I think it's all right. Um, it's I think it's pretty good. I mean, a lot of these songs, I, I want to say, I mean, since I put the list out a couple of days ago or whenever uh, my list, I, I right now there's songs that would move up and down in, in this thing. I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. they keep changing on me, which songs I feel, you know, grab me. Some take a little bit longer than other ones that, you know, I heard earlier. So um, just want to <laughs> lay that out there. And that's why that there's no real bad song on the album. Um, but that's, you know, it's a, it's a decent song, a good song, not, in the top half of my list, but pretty good. No, that's a shame. I think every single one of us on every single album ranking that we've ever done would change our rankings if yeah. asked oh, like, again. Money. Yeah, I mean, I, I had it um, mirrored to what you had it, Julian, um, second from the bottom. You know, again, not a, not a bad song, but, you know, it's the album's so good, in my opinion, that it's really tough to rank these. You know, it, it really got difficult for me um, and I was like, Ken, I went back and forth on some of these rankings and, and, you know, that's why I didn't submit it until this morning. Cause I was really just back and forth on, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to rank these things. I, I really don't. Um, and it, it, it just happened. Some, again, it's a cop out to what I said last time, but something had to finish second to last <laughs> too. Um, but it's, it's a good song. And I, I do agree with Mark in that you can really hear if you listen to, Rock or bust, and then listen to this. I really hear a difference in in Brian's singing that I, I think, I if it, it just sounds, and maybe it's just me because of everything else that happened between now and the last album. But Brian just sounds more passionate. Um, it just feels like he's just singing his ass off on this album. Not not that he wasn't in the past, but I, you, there's just maybe a, a twinkle or something in his voice. It, it's that not it just, just some, something just sounds different. So, but. Uh, Code Red, good song, but I, I had to rank it 11 out of 12. Yeah, he's singing like he lost something and found it again. Right. Like he was able to hear what he was singing again. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I mm-hmm. think it really does yeah. strike home, and that's a great point, Lonnie, that his singing is reinvigorated. And you can just actually see him, and it like takes you back in time forty years to how he mm-hmm. looked when he first came out with the band in nineteen eighty. You know, just his 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 body type for when he sings, you could just 
have that in your head as an image of him, not as an old man pushing 70, you know, but yeah. as, as a vibrant, youthful singer. And he still got the pipes. He still sounds mm-hmm. like that Jordy lad. So let's mm-hmm. move on into 10th place on 17 points. So the bottom four songs are very close in points with the exception of the, the last one, uh, Wild Reputation. And I have no notes on this one. And I think because it falls into the bottom 25th percentile for me on this album, there was just a certain amount of ho hummishness about these. And maybe, you know, it, it was simply a matter of there wasn't enough memorable elements in it for me that it really, it didn't really register enough. I'm not going to call it a bonus track because then we'd be down to nine songs on the regular <laughs> release version. Ken, let's go straight back to you. That. Yeah. yeah, that's a, too much of a cop out. Um, so yeah, Wild Reputation, that's pretty low on my list also. Um, pretty much the same reasons as you, Julian, where it's like, it's just kind of a ho-hum. Nothing, nothing really grabs you. The course doesn't, it's no real chorus. I don't know if it's really even a chorus, but it's it's kind of just a very simple wild reputation. And I think I think the riffs are good, you know, in general uh, around the verses and stuff like that. But it's just kind of it's there. It's pretty good, but it doesn't you know it's it's not one that you can go back and like yeah oh yeah it's in my head that one song that song's in my head. But no, that one won't be in your head. Some of these other songs definitely will be though. Yeah, no, I'm just going back and looking at Rock or Bus and seeing if any of these songs pop into my head, the melodies and whatnot, and uh, I'm having difficulty with that. Mark? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the song, I, I, I had it kind of like in the middle on my list, but um, one of the things that kind of jumped out on me is that riff that he plays at the beginning, that dan, 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 dan. it kind of reminds me a little bit of like that breakdown and shoot the thrill, that kind of two-fingered uh-huh. guitar riff thing that he does there. And it's not a bad riff. The only problem with it as a writer is that it's just pretty much the whole song is based around that. That's where I think people started kind of, you know, like Ken saying it's nothing too, you know, spectacular or it's nothing too, you know, memorable because it's the same part pretty much throughout the whole song. If they would have kind of mixed it up and maybe added in another part or two into it, then I think it would have made it a much more of a stronger song. But even still, the song is still, you know, catchy enough that you catch yourself, you know, bopping your foot on the floor when you're sitting down at the table or something it's it still has that memorable feel to it and again uh, and, I, and i can't emphasize this enough without brian's vocals on this the way he sings on it it would have been even lower i mean he he puts so much joy into these songs how he sings it like he, he it's like he actually is talking about having a wild reputation wild reputation you know what i mean it's like it's very he's when he sings something on this record i believe it now like in the past records, it kind of just seems like he was just singing stuff for the sake of singing it sometimes. But now it just seems like he's like in full, you know, hallelujah and back mode. And it's really showing on the record, I think. 73 years old and he's convincing. Lonnie. I thought Wild Reputation, I ranked it eighth. Um, you guys mentioned that it wasn't as memorable. I thought I thought the chorus was pretty memorable I, I and, and catchy. I, I, kind of, I kind of enjoyed it more, more than others, actually. Um, again, it's just, it's just classic ACDC. I, you know, I, I, I like the riff on it and, and I like Brian singing on it and that's, that's what ACDC is. So, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was more memorable than, than others. So I was a little surprised it was, it was third to last, honestly, even though I only, I have it fifth to last, but I, I thought it'd be, I, I thought it would rank a little higher. I, and when I did my list, I was, I was kind of going back and forth trying to rank it a little higher than what I did but I I couldn't at the end of the day <laughs> but I thought I thought it might have I thought you guys might might rank it a little higher I, I enjoyed it I thought it was really good yeah you and Mark had it uh, ranked the same so I mean it was only really uh, me who, ha- who had it low all right moving on into ninth place on 18 points rounding out the bottom third of the album systems down um Let's see, let's start with Lonnie on you on that one. Um, I hit this ninth out of twelve. Um, systems. It's. I mean, it's. It's good. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't it's. It's tough. It's tough to talk. 
poorly about these songs that are that are a little that we ranked a little bit lower on the album um because it is good i i enjoyed i enjoyed the riff and i enjoyed brian singing on it um no real issue with it um but i think and we get into the later songs i think we'll we'll just sing the praises of these other songs that, are, that really just round out the album and make it that that good um the system sounds fine i thought the chorus was 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 good it was you know somewhat catchy and um you know and angus's guitar playing is angus's guitar playing yeah mark you uh let's see you like this the most out of us yeah i mean i thought that first of all i was kind of a it instantly hooked me with that whole kind of synthy keyboard thing at the beginning that when it when it started off like that and i was like oh that's a little bit different for acdc mm. you know and then it went into that riff and that groove that that Phil Rudd has, and that's one thing. I mean, you can say what you want about Phil Rudd as a drummer, but he definitely has this groove that's essential for ACDC. Almost like I'll, I've said this before. As much as I like Matt Sorum, Stephen Adler is the backbeat of Guns N' Roses. I've always thought, and whether when he wasn't in the band, they kind of lost something. I think on the drum side of things, and you know, Phil Rudd is like that too. You know, I mean, I, I thought that Simon Wright did a decent job replacing him but he didn't have the same pocket i thought as phil rudd and even chris slate there i thought he was a pretty good drummer too uh but they're not phil you know what i mean and th that's a big thing on this record that when angus and him lock up on a groove it, it it's very very much a important part of acdc and the one thing i've noticed about this song is it made me go back to flick of the switch there's something about this song that I thought reminded me of Flick of the Switch big time. And it reminded me of that. I don't know if you've ever seen I'm sure, Julian, you must have seen it. But there was these uh, bunch of videos where they showed them rehearsing in this little, like, I don't know, it must have been an airplane hangar or something. And they were playing these songs from the record, like, numerous times, a few of them. And it was so cool to sing there, watching them, like, just jam out and play these tunes. And this song, I think, could have been on that record easily. And I, you know what? And I sometimes wonder... If they pulled a Van Halen a la, you know, different kind of truth where they might have went back, looked through some of the old cassettes and maybe found a few old Angus or sorry, old Malcolm riffs that might have worked for this record and borrowed them and used them for here. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The same way I think how Van Halen did it for their record. I mean, if it was a good riff and they didn't get to use it back then and it works now great man I, I think it worked perfectly and but I, I i definitely think this is flick of the switch era ecdc i'm glad you mentioned that album if lonnie's allowed to have ball breaker then uh, you could throw a flick of the switch firmly into an album mm -hmm. that i do adore i love putting on my guitar and playing along to that one as mm -hmm. well yeah it doesn't sound as great as the previous two albums uh ken your thoughts on uh systems down yeah, systems down was kind of low on my list but you know what I, I, i'm thinking about now this is one of those songs i probably move up a couple of notches because it's uh sound, this one keeps sounding better every time i listen to it uh it has a great riff uh in it and uh it it, it flows good i mean and the, the course is all right but uh i just think uh, it's a song that i put down a little low uh lower than i probably should have i think i should have been a couple of notches higher, but that's how I felt a couple of days ago versus uh, today after <laughs> listening more to the album. So it's kind of tough, but it's, it's a good song. Lonnie, did I get you on this? You did. I sorry, I let off. Okay, uh, then it's me. So yeah, I thought this one was actually really strong. It's like pure ACDC. Uh, but other than the guitar solo, nothing spectacularly stands out. Um, but it's not ho hum when you consider it within the context of the rest of the songs on the album so it's a it's a good middling song on this album so um i i have no issues with that um let's move on now into eighth place on 21 points money shot ken money shot <laughs> yeah uh i like this song actually a lot um it's it's about middle of my list six um i think it's a really really good song um and again i can't tell you what i know that you know the riff's good it's a different riff but it's all it's still good it's acdc uh the chorus is pretty good in that one um but 
I can tell you this is not one that sticks in my you know my head, uh, but I think it's a, a solid you know really good song that I I enjoy listening to. I'm going back to uh, flick of the switch on that. My comments about Money Shot were rising power. Uh, it's catchy, mixes all the elements that I love about ACDC, and you can hear the bass particularly. That's unusual because it's often buried in the backbeat. Mm. You don't get to kind of focus on that, mm. but Rudd and Cliff are just spot on mm. on this, as is the production. The guitar solo is ferocious. You know, it's just got again that album I mentioned right at the beginning. It's got that if you want blood vibe of, of, of aggression going mm. with it. Lonnie. Yeah, you just stole what I was going to say. Like, ACDC is so guitar driven um that you know sometimes almost all you hear is angus that it, it was it was kind of refreshing to hear the bass in it um i was like oh that's you know a little a little bit of a, of a different sound um you know from a from a band who who has one distinct sound but it, it was it was nice to kind of kind of hear that over a little bit and and angus's guitar solo in, in the song is 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 good but it, it's it is everything you love about acdc it's fun it's catchy is a great guitar solo solo in it. I mean, I think I'm going to say a lot of things about the next few songs we get into. That it's fun, it's catchy, and there's a great guitar solo because <laughs> that is ACDC. And, and <laughs> so, why? Why the hell not? And why not? So, um, Money Shot's good song. I I had it low, but I but I did but I did did enjoy those those elements to it. Nice, Mark. Yeah, I mean, again, this is another one of these ones that. Again, I, I, I feel the power of, you know, flick of the switch on this one, too, just like you did. And it, it's, again, another one of these songs where, as much as I didn't rank it very high, as second last on my list, uh, Brian singing on this is very gravelly and very, you know, very Brian johnson you know, like, in his prime, you know what I mean? Like, it's Brian Johnson, I think, almost had two periods of where he was really vocally strong back in black era obviously when he came in i mean he had something to prove and then i thought that he did a really great uh, j- uh job on uh razor's edge that album i thought he he sang really really good on like it's almost like another rebirth of the brian johnson vocal there and you know it could be happening again here because i think the songs that were low on my list musically it was only because of you know little things like that riff it was like it's a cool little riff, but I think he, they could have added more to it musically wise. But the but the backbeat and Cliff on the bass, great stuff. And again, you got to hand it to Brendan O'Brien and Mike Frazier there. They did a great job mixing and producing this stuff stuff that you can actually hear Cliff on a record finally, you know, decently. So, uh, but I, I think that when the songs are weak musically. Brian just comes in and just, you know, sings his ass off and brings it back up to, you know, higher registers in my in my opinion. Yeah. Nice. Um, Ken. I said I started with you, didn't I? I think you started with me. Lonnie, just I, I forget you. I, I've lost no, my no, tra- I've lost I've lost track. Help. It's okay. <laughs> Comes when you're looking at your phone while doing a show. All right, let's move on. Seventh place, kick you when you're down on twenty four points. Um, yeah, I think my thoughts on this one were that it's the best of the musical style previously present on Rock or Bust and Black Eyes, Lower Slower, and I don't want to say plodding, so I'll say stalking, Lonnie. I, th- I thought this one was catchy. Um, I ranked it fifth. I-, I thought it was pretty catchy. Um, the vocals like kick in on this one right away, which, which was a little a little unusual. Kind of surprised you a little bit when when it started. Um, but I enjoyed it. I, it, it. It was more plunging and just I want to. I want plotting is a good word. <laughs> plunging is a good word for it. But it's but it but it's very heavy and very just just down and in your face. So kick you when you're down, I guess is, is a good title f- for this track. So I, I thought it was good. Um, I thought it was really catchy. I've caught myself walking around singing that the last couple of days. So I thought, I thought it was really fun. That, that means something when you start humming or singing songs that you've heard. It does. 
Mark. Yeah, so I got to agree uh, with Lonnie there. When this song kicked in, like right away vocally, it was like that was something that you don't expect very often from an ACDC song, just hearing the vocals come in. But very, very strong chorus, in my opinion. I mean, I had this ranked number five on my list. And uh, the guitar riff on this, this is what I'm talking about, finally. Like, no more this little dee 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 dee. This is like a little bit more like note heavier. There's more to it, there's some more meat to it. And that's the kind of ACDC that I really like. Uh, just really good. And really, I think that lyrically and even the title is just more of an ACDC type of title to me. You know, kick you when you're down, you know, like that's, that to mm -hmm. me is what I expect from ACDC more than some of these other titles. Like, you know, Code Red is a little odd title for them. You know, you know, No Man's Land. It's almost like they're talking about an Iron Maiden kind of title or No Man's Land, you know, something like almost like, you know, that you would expect on a old Maiden record. But that title there is something that I expect from an ACDC re record, you know, like Inject the Venom or something like that. You know what I mean? So, uh, I think this song is really good. Very catchy. Great guitar playing on this. And again, my hat's off to Brian Johnson on this record. Yeah, and it's a song title like they've had before, Kicked in the Teeth. Kick you mm -hmm. while you're down. There you go. Yeah. Ken? Yeah, well, a little on my list. It's still you know, a decent song. And I, I do agree with Mark about the riff. Uh, I like that riff that they have. It's like nine notes or whatever that <laughs> riff for... <laughs> Something like that, and uh, it, it's cool. It's not your normal uh, ACDC riff, um, like you said. Some of the other ones are that little ding, ding, ding kind of thing. Um, and uh, <laughs> but the, it was a little different, which is cool. Uh, the only thing that drags it down a little bit for me is is you know the chorus. Um, it's it's you know I wish it, that was a little bit better, but it's still you know decent song. There we go. All right. Moving on into sixth place on 29 points. And this one actually surprised me through the mists of time. Lonnie. Um, this is good. Ken, Ken had this one really high, you know, which I was surprised about. We'll get into that. But I, I thought it was good. I, I, I ranked it kind of right in the middle. Um, I thought it was good. Just a classic ACDC type song. Um, not as catchy of a chorus as some of the others, at least in my opinion. But I, I really enjoyed Brian singing on this, and I enjoyed Angus's playing on this. Um, I, I thought it was good. I, I, um, I be, better better than some of the others, but not but not as good as, as some of the the top songs on the album. Um, didn't didn't kind of catchy, but but really really solid. Yeah, I think it's odd as a sentimental song from ACDC. I mean, it's not like Cover You in Oil or a love song going way back, you know, to... <laughs> Let's get it up. <laughs> to, ...to very early, but there's a sentimentality that comes across musically. It is slightly different than the usual sort of ACDC fodder, reassuringly and refreshingly different in some ways. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a nice change in pace for the album for me, which puts it right in the, the middle of the ground. And uh, by the way, anyone listening... Uh, Lonnie had a spoiler alert on his for where Ken had picked it. So, Ken. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, darn you. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine is, I, I was, was number two on my list. I, I really like it. Uh, one of the reasons I really like it um, is it's not, it doesn't sound like a lot of the other ACDC stuff. It's a little different than their normal uh, routine, I guess, or you can say it, the way they riff uh, in songs, it's, it's, it is different. And actually, the riff reminded me of a song uh, from, uh, I, I can't remember the band who did it, but it was, it was part of that soundtrack for uh, uh, Rockstar. Anyway, it just reminded me of that, and, and I really like that. And then it's a, it's a you know, decent course. Uh, it, did miss the time, and you, they have the background vocals going on in there that they're, you know, ah, uh, kind of thing. So, uh, which they do, you know, a lot uh, here and there on certain songs. But I, I really like it. And again, one of the reasons is because it's, it's, it's so different, I think, from a lot of their other songs. And it's a, and it's a good song. 
Nice. Mark? You know, the funny thing is, everything that Ken said about this song is the complete opposite of what <laughs> I thought of this song. Because, and, I, and you know, the funny thing is, I used to always complain about ACDC, about it, everything sounding the same, and, you know, why can't they do something different? Then they come out with a song like this that has a borderline sort of, you know, almost an odd meter riff at the beginning. Dan and then, 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 and it's like it's not in perfect for that riff at the beginning. And even the drum beat is very odd for it's very un, you know, feel like to do. And even the title, Through the Mists of Time, it's like, what is it, an Opus album or something? Like it's something completely. Different. That sounds like there was. It does sound like an Iron Maiden. You talk about Iron Maiden. That sounds like an Iron Maiden song. Yeah. Project Gemini. So, so when I when I but when I listened to it at first, you know, I gave it a a, a fair shake, you know, and it's there's it's not a bad song. It's just everything about it that I thought I would have liked. Like this would have been one of those songs where I was like, oh my god, they did something completely different. You know, this is what I've been waiting for for the last twenty years. But you know what? When I heard it, I was like. Uh, I like it, but I think I prefer the stuff that I'm expecting, to be quite honest, from the ACDC. And, you know, it's not, like I said, it's not bad. It's just, I wasn't expecting that odd meter thing at the beginning. I think that's the one thing that really threw me off of the song, is that it almost seemed a little too different for me. It's almost like, and I dare say this, it's almost like they were trying to pull a miniature elder. Like, let's show them that we are technically a great band here. Let's show the, let's show the critics that we can do odd meters, and let's show them that we can do, you know, but luckily they just did it at one kind of part. They didn't do a whole album of songs like this. That would have been disastrous in my opinion, but it's not a bad song. I mean, I did put it like third to the bottom, but it's, it's just, I think, a little too much different for me right now. Maybe if I listen to it in like a couple of months, I might change my opinion on that. But right now, that's kind of how I look at it. Uh, I think that's why Angus picked it. I think going back through those yeah. tapes, it jumped yeah. out at him. This sounds different. No mm -hmm. one would expect Mal to have come up with this idea. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of does stand out. And uh, I guess, you know, I must like odd meters or something. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but they're clearly not ashamed of what they do well, and they keep doing what they do mm -hmm. and what they know. So mm -hmm. they don't try yeah. to reinvent themselves. You know, it, it's not like The Elder or, you know, a, a progressive album. <laughs> All right, moving on into fifth place, which is Spell on 30 Points. Lonnie, let's start with you on that. Um, Very catchy. Very catchy. I, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, it's something that, that I could see them doing live, hopefully one day, maybe. Um, you know, if we can get a, if we can get a tour, I would, it's something that, that I could definitely see them doing. Um, it's, um, just catchy and fun and just pure ACDC. Um, I really enjoyed the hell out of Brian singing on this one. It, um, you could, you could really hear like, it's like almost like Brian like screaming, singing, singing that chorus. And I really thoroughly enjoyed it and just. It just it made me feel like it could be on you know almost any of those ACDC albums in in the eighties. It's 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 that great. And I'm, I'm probably going to say a lot about the same things with the songs moving forward. But um, just Brian's singing on it really stood out to me, and it's super catchy. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mark, sorry, so I turn my thing down. We're just getting some noise here every once in a while. Anyways, um, so this song is another one where it gave me memories of the past when mm -hmm. i heard that ding, ding, and that riff at the beginning it reminded me of shake your foundations a little bit from fly on the wall and uh it's it's not a bad riff and i mean that that record is kind of a record i kind of didn't really like at all it was one of those first ones where i was kind of like uh, they're kind of <laughs> starting to lose me a little bit but i think i was outsidely influenced with that because back when that record came out there was a guitar magazine that was circulating that I had, and and it was a one, and they had a section in there where they had listened to these songs. It was like a blind listen, and they asked musicians to think to say what they think of the song. And there was something off a of fly in the wall, and they asked Geddy Lee what they thought of it, and he said, "This is really weak. This is a 
terrible music, you know. And so I think because I was so huge into Russian, I was like, yeah, he's right, man. This is lame, man, <laughs> you know. So I think it kind of really affected me to really not like that record as much. But I mean, you know, they have some decent songs, Sink the Pink and stuff like that on there as well, too. But uh, but, but that riff very much reminds me of Shake Your Foundations in there. But uh, yeah, again, it's, the singing is great. The guitar playing is good on there when they get into the verse part of it. It's some decent guitar playing in there. But, you know, it's it's not a, it's not that bad a song, but it's, you know, it's on my bottom four, this song. So, and like we said before, just because it's in the bottom section doesn't mean that they're bad songs. It's just there has to be ones that are stronger that usurp it, right? Yep. I guess so. Can. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's right in the middle of my list. Um, <clears throat> it's a good song. Uh, I like the little breaks, uh, you know, the, where they give some uh, space uh, in between the riffs. You know, they kind of dun 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 dun, and then a little break, and then come in again. You know, uh, it, which you know ACDC has done a whole bunch of times in the past too. But yeah, I like them the way they do that. Um, and uh, yeah, his singing. Uh, Brian singing is really, really good on this song. And uh, this is another song that I think it was really high on my list. Then it kind of fell, and then, it, you know, whatever. It's uh, it's right in the middle. Um, and, uh, you know, another another good song. Definitely, definitely an ACDC, you know, song sound, or sound from the past, actually. Yeah, so I thought this one started out pretty badly lyrically. You know, the beginning mm. of the song, the lyrics are, you, I'm just like going, okay, yeah, it rhymes, but uh, it's kind of lame. <laughs> but then it gets to the bridge yeah, and the right. chorus, and it's just, it, it's, it launches. And the yeah. riff is just monstrous. I love the bass gliss. You know, that's the thing when Gene, like Gene Simmons pulls down on the bass strings and you get like a reverberate. It's, I just love that. And when it works in a song, it's really freaking awesome. Uh, again, you get to hear Cliff. Um, and the guitar in parts, I, I don't get the kind of the fly on the wall part, but I do get a bit of for those about to rock coming through in this song. Um, so th that's that's what I get out of it anyway. All right, moving on into fourth place. Boom, shot in the dark. First song off the first single off the album on thirty three points. So uh, Ken, go back to you on that because I, I I always go by who's on mute just to kind of. Throw <laughs> I know. Just to just annoy just... anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, shot in the dark. Yeah, it was the first song uh, you know that they released and I I heard and and. Yeah, immediately I thought I, I hearkened back to the you know the almost the back in black or you know uh, uh, for those about to rock you know era of of albums. Uh, to me, it just sounded like it it could fit in on that. I don't know if I wrote anything on that actually. Uh, yeah, I did <laughs> back in black. So yeah, I felt that it could fit right in there. Um, it's a really good song, um, and it's a, it's a song that kind of at uh, first you know it got stuck in my head um and so it's high on my list number four on my list so it's a good one mark yeah this song was a great selection for a single i thought it definitely has that back in black vibe to it for sure that dan, 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 that it, it definitely makes me go back to like a few songs in back in black that has that kind of feel to it but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that album sold like seven quadrillion copies, so there's nothing wrong with having something to copy off of that, right? Uh, but it's, it's it's really good. The chorus is fantastic. Very catchy. It was one of these ones that I caught myself this morning. I got up, went to the washroom, and I found myself... I was actually singing in the washroom when I woke up this morning. So, again, it's another one of these ones where that have lodged themselves in my head and just stuck there. So that's always a great indicator of a very strong song. And I even thought the video was pretty cool with it. They, you know, capitalized on that whole kind of very reddish background that they played on there. It looks pretty cool. I mean, I think that there was nothing wrong with this selection as a single. It's a very, very strong song. And actually, I'm surprised it was at this position. I thought it might have been a bit higher. 
Sorry. It's my fault. Lonnie. <laughs> um, I had it pretty high. I had it ranked third on my list. Um, again, very catchy song. Um, song you can song you could definitely hear on, on Back in Black, like you guys said, or or, or a number of those albums in the 80s with Brian really in his prime. So um, very catchy. Could definitely see why they picked it to be a single. Um, could definitely see him doing a live in concert. Um, just a fun, fun ACDC song. Great lyrics. Great guitar. Just pure ACDC. Okay, so I apologize. It was my fault why this ended up in fourth place because it was a really, it was a really good leadoff single because I immediately thought back in black, given the dog a bone when I heard this song. Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. it, it was yeah. Uh, like a recycle. Yeah. Why is it down so low? Um, it's not because it's not good musically. It's not because oh. it doesn't have a great video. It's not because it's not a good song. It's just what the it? lyrics. Shot in the dark beats a walk in the park. I can't get over that. Okay. You actually um, pay attention to the lyrics. Yes, know. when you when you have yeah, Brian like Johnson in full flight, first song you're hearing, <laughs> talking about a walk in the park. I know he's 73 <laughs> years old, but we don't need to sing about walks in the park, Brian. Not when you're singing like a freight train. So that was the only reason. And again, it doesn't make it rubbish. It's a really good song. It just something had to knock it down a notch, and I did. I'm sorry. I apologize. Let's move on. Hide my shame. Into third place on 35 points, Demon Fire. Um, Lonnie. Demon Fire. I had it seven. Um, I thought it was fine. Um, I, thought, I thought it was, you know, I, I, I honestly thought it was more middle of the road. I, I guess I ranked it lower than you guys did it's, if it's up mm -hmm. this high. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't as memorable for me. Um, Demon Fire, Fire sounds like ACDC, but to me it was it was just okay. Fire, I, it, fire, fire, yeah, fire. It was, you know, it, it was it was it was it, it didn't stand out. It didn't stand out to me as much as others. So I'm, I, I just thought it was fine. I didn't think it was the, one of the better songs on the album. So I'm interested to see why you guys ranked it higher than I did because I. I didn't. It's not one of the songs that I've caught myself singing, you know, over the last week or so or anything like that. It's just, it's just been kind of middle of the road. Mark. Yeah. Well, honestly, this song reminds me of a whole lot of Rosie. Like right off the bat, that and 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 I think mm -hmm. at the beginning of the plays, da da da. da I, that to me, right away brought me back to like Let There Be Rock era, you know, ACDC, Bon Scott, you know, and I'm a much bigger. Uh, Bon Scott era liker of the music right of that time I like Brian Johnson vocally better than Bon Scott but I think musically back then you know they were much more I don't know how to how to kind of explain it but they were very much you know rough around the edges a little bit more rougher once they started getting in later and they had more money they could do better production you know they had better producers working with them so their records became a bit more polished sounding you know when you have mutt lang and you have you know bruce fairburn working on your records they can't sound the same as they did when you were working with you know george young and these guys in the back back in the day right but that's not to say i don't like those records i love it but that's why when I heard that right away, I was like, ooh, this is almost like a throwback song. That it, it just right away when I heard that, the first thing was like, whole lot of rows. Right away, I could see him, you know, sitting on Brian's shoulders while running around the arena playing, you know. It, it, it just it brought me back that memory, and I think that's why I ranked it fourth. Nice. Ken? Yeah, I have to agree with Mark. I mean, I thought the same thing, that it, it went back to the uh, – you know the Bon Scott era. I was like, "Oh, this sounds like that." Yes, yeah, so this is this would have been a perfect vehicle for his vocal. I could he almost hear him singing uh, the the song the way it goes. Um, it's just like, wow, that really went back to a, you know '70s feel um, for Back in Black. Um, and it's you know I ranked it pretty pretty high, pretty high on mine. And the other thing about it is like, oh, man, this sounds like a great you know driving song if you're driving. It just sounds like just the way it motors. Uh, it's like, wow, well, yeah, that, this is a perfect song. If you <laughs> we have a have, have a list of songs that you like to listen to, um, add this one to it because that's a great, 
great driving song. Excellent. I think you've all covered points that I would make on this, and the riff encapsulates ACDC for me. I love the lyrics. I love the multiple voicings from Brian. It's not just one tone, how he's singing it. There's a bunch of different, you know, styles that are coming in. I think that is what you said, you know, about Bon maybe being able to sing it. Um, Very, very catchy chorus, which is just, again, pure ACDC, zero pretensions. And I think I'm going to have to road test this the next time I'm going to get my my USB stick updated with uh, this album. All right, let's move on into second place. Um, on 41 points, rejection is not rejected. Ken? Yes. <laughs> Pretty good, um, Julie. Yeah, it was not rejected. Uh, it was number one. I, yeah, this is the one where that it could be in my top three. I ended up at, at number one. Um, uh, I just think it's a r- real good song. Nice riff. Um, I'm trying to remember the, the, the song right now, believe it or not. <laughs> but it, it, really? I, I know I like it. I've been there over the yeah. last hour, no more. <laughs> just just hum like Miss Adventure and it'll come back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yes. So, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good song, a good, excellent riff, and it's a good chorus. So, um, I think this one has a pretty good Angus solo in it, too, from what I remember. So, um, it's there for a reason. I I must have uh, you know heard it enough times to uh, put it at number one on my list. You can't remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, I look at other songs that I didn't put number one. I'm like, oh, maybe that should have been number one. Like I said, a lot of these songs are so close. Uh, you can switch them, switch them out easy. Yeah. Uh, well, three of you had it at the top or near the top. But Lonnie, in second for you. I had it too. Um, and I and I teetered back and forth between this one and the one I had ranked one for being the best. I, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I really thought it was, it was a catchy chorus and, you know, found myself singing along to it in the car and um, almost right away, catch yourself singing along to it. It was that catchy, that quick. And I, I, I love songs that, that get you singing the chorus, you know, the second time you get to the chorus. So, um, and this song did that for me. And I, I like that. I like the, the guitar work from Angus, they just it just sounds so so classic. As be, and being like the second song on the album, ACDC has a tendency to really kind of front load their albums. Or the first few songs on their albums are just really really good. And and this is a pure example of that. Being the second song on the album, it just really just sucks you into the album. By this point, you know, f- first time I was listening to the album, you know, I really enjoyed realizing and then I heard this, and I'm just like, man, this is good. You know, this is like almost, you know, stripped down to my clothes and run around the street, high five in the neighbors. So good. ACDC's back. You know, I was really excited by the, by the time I was, I was listening to the second song on the album. So I ranked it two. I wanted to rank it one, but something had to be, something had to be one, something had to be two. And it was really a coin flip, but I really enjoyed the song. But I really enjoyed the song. Nice. Mark. Yeah, I, I ranked it number one. I mean, the, this song was everything that, I was missing and didn't realize I was missing about ACDC. That riff at the beginning there. Like that's that was so perfectly executed and it has such a great guitar tone on that. I, I like right like just just like how uh, Lonnie said, you start with realize, you know, and you're rocking through that and thinking to yourself, hey, this this is a good good song. And then you drop into this one and it's like, whoa, this to, to me was even better. Than right. the first song, and I was like, okay, now we're gonna have a good record. And from here on in, like Lonnie said, and I agree, this album is very front loaded, like a lot of their records are. But I mean, it's it's pretty loaded solidly at least until like four or five into the song, like into the album, like fifth song in, it's still really strong, you know. And the, it's just the two things on this record that have really stood out for me listening to it over and over again is that when Angus is on fire. And you know, and the and the uh, the brother there or the cousin on guitar when they're locked in together, um, you know that's what makes this album really soar. And Brian Johnson, it was the greatest thing that he came back into the band. I mean, t- you can say that with all of them too. Cliff was integral to this too. I think you can hear him really well on this album. 
He played really well. You can tell that he's happy to be back. You know, Phil is probably glad that he's just out of jail and he's drumming with them again. So it's it's a great thing that he's back into. You know, he has a great beat going on. It's it's back. ACDC's back. You know what I mean? Like this album solidifies the greatness that is ACDC. And this song is one of those things where this far into their career for them to have written songs like this. Wow. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed. Yeah, so this one actually was middle of my list. And again, it just reminded me a little bit too much of, you know, Misadventure from Rocker Rock or Bust. Um, so again, it's not a bad song. It's just that there are other songs I like much more than this on this album. Mm-hmm. But I think your point, Mark, about ACDC front-loading its albums, you take those first eight songs in a row... And it's just boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's Mike Tyson. Well, actually, he wouldn't hit you eight times. He'd get it over in one. But, you know, you're, you're getting <laughs> you're getting pummeled by a mighty band um, mm. throughout. All right, recapping. In 12th, No Man's Land. 11th, Code Red. 10th, Wild Reputation. 9th, Systems Down. 8th, Money Shot. 7, Kick You When You're Down. 6, Through the Mist of Time. 5, Which is Spell. Four, Shot in the Dark. Three, Demon Fire. Two, Rejection. Meaning, very obviously, in number, in first place, on 43 points, Realize, the lead-off song from the album. So, Lonnie, lead us off. Realize is great. Um, It just, I just mentioned it the last time, and I marked it too, but, you know, you you start up an ACDC album, and you hear that guitar, and it just makes you smile and it sucks you in and then you get to the chorus and it's a catchy chorus and then you get to the solo and it's a great guitar solo by angus young and you're you're singing along to the chorus the second time it comes around it's like this is classic acdc I could see him, you know, you know, if if we're we're lucky enough to get to some sense of normalcy and have an ACDC tour that, of them opening with this song on on their on their would be tour. So um I think it's it's great. It was just you 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 press play and it's just a breath of fresh air the first time you hear it. And every time I've listened to the album in the last week, you know, I press play and I hear the song and it's just like fires you up and just like ready to just run into a freaking wall. So, and, and that's what AC, ACDC will do to you. Good, AC, good ACDC will do to you. Just make you, you know, fired up and just ready to take on the world. So, um, realize it's a, it's a great opener for the album and it's my favorite song on the album, um, with rejection being a close second, but you know, the one, two, punch, we'll talk about, we've done shows talking about one, two punches on albums. Talk about a great one-two punch to start off an album, realizing that rejection um, doesn't get much better than that. Nice, Ken. Yeah, I I, I thought that uh, it was a great opener. I wrote that down. It was a great opener. Um, what I do really like about it is, well, it you know kind of goes back to again to that '80s or '80s feel. But um, <clears throat> there's a a riff that he play that they must be Angus playing uh, on his guitar during the first like line that that uh brian johnson sings is just plays while he's actually singing in the background of phil right there and then the next line though it's not there and then it goes on and then it goes into a chorus then it gets to to the next verse and then he plays that line uh that little riff while brian sings for, for two lines on that on the next go around i wish he would have done that more i thought it was just really good you don't hear that a lot uh on um, the, the fill right while the guy is singing uh, you know a guitar fill at, at the same time usually it's in between the lines not at the same time so i thought that was really cool and I, as it sounded it's a really nice little fill that sounds good and uh, so the whole song the riffs are great uh Great opener, a good chorus, and uh, it has a breakdown, a little bit of a different towards the end or middle end uh, where it's kind of reminded me of something from Black and Black. Uh, but uh, I thought, yeah, it's a really good song. Nice. Mark? Yeah, good ear, Ken. I mean, that 
that whole <laughs> bit about the line in the verse there, it's true that it's not very often that ACDC at least does that kind right. of thing where they do a verse part and they do a little like lead lick underneath it. And, and it's it's a kind of a very ZZ Topish thing too, where they do a vocal and then he, he kind of answers it with a guitar line, right? Very blues based, but then you know ACDC are very blues based as well. So uh, good good ear, and it's, that's a, that's a little production trick. Um, but I think also that the beginning of the song reminded me right away of kind of like a thunderstruck when he does that. Hey, hey, hey. it's almost I was almost waiting for him to go. Ah, in that part there yeah. but it's it's good I, I i don't mind when he has these little like hints at things that happened already with acdc it's kind of like a i think it was julian who said in a when we were texting back and forth about how this record is like a pair of comfortable shoes those little things that they throw in make it that comfortable shoe because it's like oh i remember that yeah i remember this vibe and this feel from this record and it's all the things that we kind of loved about acdc is now all coming back on a record that we can listen to now in 2020. And it's it's a great, great album. I mean, everything about this record, I, I think they put a great deal of thought and detail into it. And I think that it just, again, has turned myself into a much more happier person listening to it. You know, if I'm in a kind of, you know, maybe in a down mood or something, or if I need to take a break from something and listen to something, you know, this record could be the one that I might pull out and, you know, listen to more often. It's it's such a good album, and this song is a good good opener for 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 an album. And having this followed by rejection, I mean, I mean, what more could you possibly ask for? Yeah, the importance of being earnest, kicking down your door with your lead off track, the opening track on any album, not just ACDC, is incredibly important because the first thing you do when this track comes on, volume goes up. It just seems to have that effect on me. It's such a powerful lead-off track that it's like they're kicking off the shackles of the past few years. Malcolm, retiring from the band with dementia and dying. Um, their lead singer, losing his hearing, having to leave the band. Their drummer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, we just don't need to rehash <laughs> Phil. I'm not getting whacked. Um, you know, and just all the drama that they almost phoned it in, a rock or bust. And now this is vibrant, alive. It's Malcolm is still here and speaking through the music that those ideas are being watered and growing into fully fledged and equally valid ACDC songs. They're shouting at you, we're still here, remember this? And it takes you back to all these different areas. Um, you know, you hear a little bit here, a little bit there. Oh, that reminds me, you smile and you bop your head, you tap your foot. It has all, it's causing all those emotional responses that a great album does again mm -hmm. at a time when we need it the most. So this song just opens that door. It's opening a Pandora's box of goodness. There's not a bad track on this album. There are some I prefer today more than others. There are some that I'll prefer more than others tomorrow. That's the great mm -hmm. thing about music. It's about your mm -hmm. mood. It's about your day. Uh, final thoughts on the album before we wrap up, Lonnie. I mean, just just a breath of fresh air in 2020 that we can get something as fantastic as a new ACDC record that sounds like, you know, is almost like a time capsule. It's so good that you know a lot of our a lot of our classic bands don't release albums that are this good this late in their career. Um, that it's so vibrant and. It, it it just it takes me back to my youth listening to this to this album because it, it doesn't sound like ACDC from 2020 or it sounds like ACDC from the 80s or the 90s. It's 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 that good and that clean and crisp. Um, and and I you know I I hope other bands take note of how um, appreciative fans are and how happy fans are to get new music from their favorite artists during these dark times and you know that they can say you know what look at the response that acdc is getting you know maybe maybe we should do something too you know mm -hmm. you know we, you, you you can do some social distancing and and record a record so get out there and do it let acdc be the example and, and maybe maybe some of these other bands could take note and, and do the same thing ken final thoughts 
Yeah, I'm with Lonnie on that. Um, uh, you know, you know, thank you ACDC for you know pulling this one off. Uh, they did a, a fantastic job. Um, this is probably my first ACDC ACDC uh, you know CD and album or whatever since uh, Ball Breaker. Um, and like you, I went to the Ball Breaker. That was the only time I saw them on um, Ball Breaker yeah. tour um, at Oakland. Um, but that you know, this is just great that they they did this. You know, it was it was a pleasant surprise. Um, there's not a whole lot of good rock or classic rock, you want to call it, music out there. Um, and and they did a great job. Then it lives up to their you know to their past. Yeah, Mark, lead us out with your thoughts. Yeah, again, this is the record that I didn't realize I needed and wanted. I'm very glad that it's out and I'm, that I'm listening to it. Uh, the comments that both uh, Ken and Lonnie made are extremely valid. I really hope that other classic bands, and I'm looking at that band over Ken's head particularly, can maybe take a note from these guys and say, you know what? I know they're, I know they're not going to do it because they're a bunch of stubborn morons, but I think that if they were to, to actually listen and, you know, we hear, we obey, which is a line that they have not followed for 20 years, I think. Uh, and, and if they actually did something that their fans wanted, they would make a record like this. Because I think ACDC should be the one that have that line now. We hear, we obey. Kiss should hide their heads in shame now because of this record. Because they, they just taught them a, a very valuable lesson. That it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still make a very valid record and kick ass still in your 70s. I don't know what those guys are afraid of, but they need to really take a look in the mirror and ask themselves what the hell they're still doing in this music business if they're not going to make any more music. Well, on that positive Hot note. Take. <laughs> Mark with the Welcome hot take. To 2020. Yeah, there, there we go. That's a reality <laughs> check from Marcus Almighty. Thanks, Mark. Um, I would say that same message to Aerosmith as well and to any band. But there we go. Um, that's our review. That's our thoughts on ACDC's Power Up. We do appreciate you joining us today. So from Mark, from Lonnie, and Ken and myself, thanks for, see for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode. Be sure to subscribe to us, like us, or even leave us a review. You can find us and join the conversation on Facebook. Facebook.